Hello, everyone. This is Joshua Clutch Gray. I want to apologize about the broadcast for the Major League Championship Series Spring 2013 Finals between Fulcrum Gaming and Wreak Havoc. There were some issues with the Twitch server that we were not able to fix whatsoever. It was completely out of our control. So in the panic mode, we were able to local record the matches between these two amazing teams and decided that we would splice them together and give you guys the full VOD experience. So once again, we apologize that there was no official live stream of these games, but we were able to capture them. So go ahead and enjoy the action. Hello everybody and welcome to the World of Tanks Major League Championship Series Spring 2013 Finals of Fulcrum Gaming versus Wreak Havoc. We're in the game already. There were some issues with the stream. We apologize for that. But we're going to go ahead and live record here to show you guys the action that we can upload later on to the actual uh, channel for Wargaming. So it's F0 right now that we're following on the team that is Fulcrum. And my buddy, my pal, my partner in crime, Andre Gritorp Hengshua will be joining me tonight to commentate on this series. Andre, you'll be getting the World of Tanks, man. You're the resident mathematician over there <laughs> for the newly announced North American League. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. You know, World, World of Tanks, I had a lot of trepidation going into it because, of course, uh, I'm a, a StarCraft II elitist. But after really studying it... Man, the, the amount of statistics and math and RNG that goes into it, I am super psyched to be casting this. I can really bring, I guess, my element of statistics to this game. So I'm really excited to be casting this with you, Clutch. A resident expert in math is very <laughs> important for this game because there's so much uh, geometry and ratios and you factor in ranges and how RNG works and how penetration works. It's very, very fascinating to get into the the depth that this game offers Heck yeah. uh, right now going and looking at the game it looks like the first blood went to fulcrum taking down that tier one uh, cunningham invader and looking at the map position right now one of the tier ones thor x thor is based at the b1 b2 position of the map at this moment right now we're on ruinberg the first map of the night this is a best of five the winner first place will take home two hundred thousand gold second place will take home a hundred thousand gold these teams are fighting for a hundred thousand gold difference that's and a lot of uh that's a lot of gold man it is a lot of gold holy it moly a lot of gold a yeah lot of gold. you know i do want to comment on this the them taking out the t1 a lot of people think uh, or especially people go coming into this. You know, I was one of the people that thought, hey, it's just a T1, it's not a big deal. But you can already see how skewed um, Wreak Havoc has had to become because they're all kept on that bottom rank. Uh, you know, B1, B2, or excuse me, not B1, um, H and J around there, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. And this is causing them to be really out of position if, of course, they come from top. So no matter what, Fulcrum has the tempo control to do whatever they want to do. That's what's so important, and that's what makes you know one or two shots is all it takes uh, in these these confrontations. One or two shots, indeed, Gritor. Uh, again, we apologize to you guys if you're watching this VOD and weren't able to see the live stream of the first game. After this game is over, we're gonna head and pop up uh, the live stream. Those of you that are not familiar with World of Tanks, it is an ever-increasing game. 55 million users have logged in so far a lot of accounts i'm going and checking out absolute royal and that t71 i've seen a couple teams on the korean league retorb uses t71 one of the takes need to do some more research on but uh pretty fast little mover here with a gun that could do some <laughs> in interesting things as they say finding out that the t1 cunningham can actually damage the rears of these tier 8 heavies <laughs> and even you know cause uh fl fire sometimes is oh yeah pretty neat you know you think they're not completely helpless I think the T-71 fulfills the same role as something like a WZ-131, 132, in that they are fast, they have a little bit of firepower, but in the event that your T-1s die, you still have the option to flag cap, and that's something that's so important because obviously it gives you the ability to just maintain that extra thing for your opponents to deal with and get them out of position. As you can see, Fulcrum is coming up to the top here in A, B, 4, and 5. And this is, this is exactly what you need to do, right? You take out the T1 on the other side. Uh, you basically skewed them. Which the T71 just did. Just took oh down X God. Yeah, and, and now you're up, you're up two, two points right now. And that might seem very little, but having that scouter, the T1, and of course the Bison, they have all the tempo. They will most certainly have a positional advantage for the first composition fight. 
The positional advantage is so key in this game. And a lot of people think, well, what's what is the main strategy? And if you break it down from a team, it's knowing when your te where your teammates are and how you're going to position yourselves against the enemy and how you're going to move in. And a T, you know, a T1 place on the other side of the map, Green Torp, is going to be crucial if you try to stop or at least position where the enemy is going to come from for a flank. And losing any tank is bad. And those two tier uh, one tanks, those two scouts, down for wreak havoc. It's not good. It's not good at no, all. No, definitely not. And now, I mean, Fulcrum can do any set of things. They're actually going to try to isolate the two tanks on the top. Looks like the AMX 5100 and the other AMX 5100. Oh, wow! Both of them going down already. Sweet Jesus, Clutch. I was really, really fast with that concentrated <laughs> fire. But that's why those tanks are so popularly used, especially on a map like Runeberg. More concentrated fire from Soviet and Nagatron using that uh, dual mechanic of going back and forth between their tanks to share HP. Very, very, very effective. They have uh, almost 2,000 HP split between the two of them, and now they're going to push up on this placement of the two tier 69s that are being used by Wreak Havoc. T69 is a tank that a lot of different teams are starting to use and phasing out the T32. A very, very, very well used medium tank. Uh, it can kind of fulfill that need of definitely helping out any heavies in a position with flanking, and the cannon that it uses is quite effective in any sort of matchup. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, that burst is unbelievable. They're going to clean things up. You know, I saw it on my camera that uh, the two AMX uh, 5100s didn't even see Fulcrum coming. And that's going to be a full sweep. Fulcrum going to take it. 42 points to zero, man. That is insane. Seven to zero. That's a, that's a clean sweep right there, if I say so myself. Clutch. As they say in Mortal Kombat, flawless victory. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice indeed. Yes, uh, bring up the stats on tier 69. You know, it's cannon can do 240 damage and penetration 300 using the armor composite rigid rounds. Yeah. So it definitely does work as a medium tank, and it is it is Correct. loved by many. Uh, but the was not one, able to hold that. The one thing is, if you are going, or your opponents are going 50 100s, uh, one of the main things why you pick up that medium tank, in my opinion, is for the, of course, the auto auto loader and the armor pen. And you do have a little bit of, I would say, redundancy because mm -hmm. you have 300 armor pen against AMX 5000s, which you can, you can just slap around. They, they, they get all squirmy, man. So uh, mm -hmm. there is a little bit of redundancy, so there could be potentially better picks for the AMX 5000s. But uh, overall, of course, it is blind picks, so you don't get to know exactly what your opponents are doing. They're still all around great, great tanks. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and cut this video and try to log on to the stream right now so we'll see you guys online hello everyone welcome to battle number two best of five of fulcrum gaming versus wreak havoc fulcrum gaming is able to take first game game number one so decisively green torp and we're on ruinberg once again yep switching positions of course uh to, to negate any potential positional imbalances so that both teams have equality and they're gonna meet up over on the western side and shots are firing clutch back and forth the gauge are going on right now friction taking a lot of damage on the side of fulcrum but it looks like on the side of wreak havoc unknown one is taking a lot of the brunt force of the advancement from fulcrum now again this little deviation on this hill here they are pushing up towards these buildings I would say Wreak Havoc has a little bit of an advantage with that cover, and they get oh. the first kill against Friction. Absolutely. That was gigantic. What Wreak Havoc did so well was they spread out the damage across all their tanks. Of course, Fulcrum took a little bit too much damage on Friction, and because of that, he was a main priority. Now they have a, a substantially less amount of tanks, a less amount of DPS to really push out here. Nagatron trying to take the right flank, but they are two tanks down, one tier 7 and one tier 8. Nagatron's going to back up here, currently hosting the T69. Another T69 from Hugo Maximus taking the rear, but he's taking some shots himself. Unknown one is almost down, 27 Whoa. hit points left, Great Torp. But see what he does there. He just backs up, he makes sure he's alive, and all he has to do is pop out when he knows his opponents are clipping. And that's very easy to tell when you're super outnumbering your opponents. Uh, as you can see, Nagatron is getting uh, dished out a little bit by that T1, but not going to happen. They're not going to do that much damage or any damage at all. Oh, poor T1. Soviet gets the T1. <laughs> Friction, Hugo Maximus, and Absolute Royal are down 
on the side of Fulcrum. Yeah. A very quick engagement, and it definitely was in favor of Wreak Havoc. Now, at this point, I think what Wreak Havoc wants to do is start to spread the map out a little bit. You want to make sure that those guns are not pointing in the same direction. Uh, well, of course, they have to point in one direction, but if all your tanks are at the same direction, that's a big problem. So here we go, spreading it out. You can see the angle, the arc that's going over Fulcrum. It's two versus five, looking really good for the cabin. Soviet is completely surrounded. He might get the kill on Blackjack 7. He does, but Thy Bane with the AMX 5100. Gonna get the target on Nagatron. A crash into each other between Fulcrum. Now it's only F0 left in the Tier 1 Cunningham. He's not going to be able to pressure the enemy base whatsoever. It's going to be a miracle if he's able to pull this off. <laughs> uh, he's simply hiding in the bushes right now. It's only going to be a matter of time. Absolutely. Ah, wonderful play. You know, Fulcrum did it right. They tried to hug one of the corners or one of the sides to make the angle of attack a lot less. Of course, as soon as you hug a side, only 180 degrees you have to worry about. If you stay in the middle, it's, you know, at most 360 could go a lot uh, a lot lower than that though depending on where you're positioned but uh obviously fulcrum not able to clean everything up this t1's gonna get cleaned up here and we're gonna have a 1-1 score going into match number three really well played in that beginning phase of spreading out the damage very well played indeed by both the both the teams here yeah I, you would think why would they want to choose they being wreak havoc why would they want to choose the map they just lost Well, they completely change up the strategy they had an idea of where Fulcrum was going to push, and they completely shut them down. And that's how you're able to read your enemy and be able to adjust accordingly. And that's right. Very, very well done. Very well done by both these teams here. Um, those T69s melted pretty fast. <laughs> uh, even with Soviet's a AMX 5100 in that corner, I don't know if there's much that he could do in that situation, Great Tour. Yeah, just, I mean... In the beginning, that was a really, really fortunate position for them to be in. Immediately taking off T69, it's all a matter of can you play out an already won game, right? But um, they were able to do it, so well played. And we're going to go into game number three. Next game up and coming here. We're going to go ahead and try one more time to see if we can join the Twitch server. If not, we'll continue to local record here. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, in game three of the Major League Championship Series Spring 2013 Finals of Fulcrum Gaming versus Wreak Havoc. We're currently tied 1-1. Again, Ruinberg. <laughs> Going to continue on uh, the matches here. Yes, sir. Uh, looking at the lineup, we have very, very similar lineups as we've had in the past two games. Uh, T69s everywhere, okay? This is, like, this is like an Oprah show with T69s being given out everywhere. On top of that, you have two Amex 5100s for... Havoc, and also for Fulcrum. Still going with that T71 as their Tier 7, having that extra point go instead of a an extra scout. They put down a Bison. I really like the Bison, man. Even though it is a city map, I just feel like the Bison undoes a lot of stagnant positions. Yeah, the Bison, when I first saw it being used in League Play, I thought, what? It's too tiny. It's too small of a tier. But looking at the stats of the Bison, it's a Tier 2 from Germany. It was built in 1940 historically. I love looking up the historical facts of these different tanks. Uh, HP 120, not that much. But looking at the damage output, 300 oh, wow. for the premium shells. And a penetration that of 75. So it, it when it does land, it does do damage for sure. Yes, it does damage. It, it doesn't always like do a lot of damage, of course, with with uh, such little pen to a lot of things. But well, the, the, little, pen is, the little pen, to clarify, is... Uh, that's on not the premium rounds. It's 228 penetration, oh. uh, potential penetration for uh. the heat rounds, and 300 uh, for those rounds. You got to. It depends on the rounds they use. You got to know which yeah. round. It's a bit stronger than a paper cut, right? Yeah, a bit, a bit stronger than a paper cut. But here we go. Uh, Reek Havoc has chosen to to go into the city again, similar to game one, and they're wrapping around to the flag very, very fast. Um, just poking around the corner, seeing what's going on, but maintaining that control in the center of the city. And of course, this makes sense for Fulcrum not to want to go into the city because they have their bison. Yep, <laughs> tactically positioning that artillery way in the back of the map can actually change any type of play on the map itself. However, 
Trying to capture already is wreak havoc. Bison shooting with relics. Looks like he's able to land a shot or somebody does to try to reset. However, yes, still 40, per 40 points left on it. This is quite an aggressive move from wreak havoc here, Greetorp. And if Hugo Maximus can't get a hit on one of those tanks that's in the area, which he does, however, it's going to be a quick, quick victory. Oh, more yeah. hits are landing, more hits are landing. Okay, Fulcrum is moving into position. Correct, but nice focus fire from Wreak Havoc. Uh, Wreak Havoc, all they need to do is track someone, and then they can just focus them down. That's the main advantage. But of course, Fulcrum has the advantage of backing up and then dishing out the damage, distributing it among all of them. So you can see, doing a great job, Fulcrum is a little low with all the tanks, but they're not really losing that many. Call me Sarge, unknown one, they go down. Fulcrum is still alive. Two tanks left for wreak havoc, and they are sitting wow. right around the corner. Now these two, uh, this, these two T69s and this AMX 5100 will easily clean this up with Soviet from the rear and his AMX 5100, plus the shots coming from Absolute Royal and his T71 yeah, man. doing work as that's that tier the 7 advantage. Tank. That's the advantage of that speed, of that uh, mobility, and all of a sudden. Fulcrum able to take advantage of the situation. Of course, the Bison really helps out in the beginning phase, doing a little bit of damage, but this positioning, I mean, they're just out in the open, and of course, we see Fulcrum going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, making sure nobody gets really killed. So that's why it's important. Yes, you're wasting a shell to track someone, but I really feel like taking out one of their tanks really, really fast is a must when you're going into those positions. You can't just be taking damage and letting them back up every single time. Fulcrum takes a victory on that map. It is now two to one. Fulcrum needs only one more victory to take home that $200,000 gold prize. Greetorp and I will also announce what is happening for the North American stream and how it ties into this. I'm currently talking to Wargaming right now. Tell them about the service, guys. We apologize for this. We are local recording, though, the matches. Yeah, and that being said, we are going to go into game number four pretty soon here. I'm really interested to see what map is chosen because we've seen the same map three times in a row. But that being said, uh, hang tight and hopefully, well, hopefully we can get this live. Hopefully we can. <laughs> we'll try all time. Hello everyone and welcome back to the World of Tanks Major League Championship Series Spring 2013 Finals. Fulcrum Gaming versus Reek Havoc. Fulcrum is in the lead, Gretorp. 2-1, to one. they simply need one more victory. Yes sir, after a really impressive performance, I love what Fulcrum did uh, in that last match. They said, you know, if you want to go ahead and, and, and take the city, go for it. That's fine, but I know... Anywhere of value, which is, of course, flag or, or where Fulcrum is positioning, which is out in the open, my bison is going to be relevant. And as soon as it becomes relevant, I will get that first shot, and then I have a target to focus down on. And that's something that's so important, you know, just having that, uh, that target. I know it sounds so silly, but uh, having your whole team being able to focus on a single person gives them just a much better probability of getting that early advantage. You know, if you're five on five, if this damage is spread out between all five and the, the other team directs it all at one, you're going to have a lot better chances at uh, winning the upcoming fight, no matter, on, uh, honestly, what tanks that you're up against. Looking at the stats of the T-71, it has a kind of quick traverse speed of 56 degrees. Uh, whole armor is not too good, 25, 22, 19. It is an American Tier 7 light tank. The pros of this tank... High burst damage potential and a high top speed. So it gets quick. It's quick to get around. But it's got some very poor armor and unusually large tracks you guys can see on the video right there. Those tracks are huge. It almost looks like a Tonka truck. But uh, very, very intriguing to see Absolute Royal use the T-71. Of course, in any of these matches, the different tank lineups is half the, half the mind battles, half the mind games before the match even begins of what tanks are my enemies going to select and what tanks can we use to counter what they selected. And I'm sorry, Clutch, but I super failed and forgot to ready up, so you're going to have to be watching it by yourself. Man. Okay, man. <laughs> All right. Well, over here on the right side of the map is Friction of the Tier 69, T71, scouting to the left of the Ruinberg Streets. Again, the same map. Soviet taking the very rear of the AMX 5100. 
T69 and T71 able to spot for their team as they were able to position, uh, or at least try to pinpoint where the two AMX 5100s were. Tier 69, T69 is still spotted for them. 71 doing some drifting here, going back and forth, trying to have some fun. Uh, Grito, have you been have you been able to play the T69 uh, yet in your adventures it's, of learning World of Tanks? It's beautiful. <laughs> It's like the best pub stomping uh, tank that I've ever played before. It's it is wonderful. Fun. It it is fun. I've played a little bit of it with that auto loader. Again, any auto loader tank, you think, "Wow, I feel so powerful." Until you have to reload, <laughs> then you realize, "Wow, I feel so vulnerable." But its rate of fire, at seven point twenty seven rounds per minute, and has an incredible view range of four hundred meters. So, it is the tank that can you know move in move out um but for its t for its tier for its size for medium tank it does have kind of a slower speed and a larger profile but it makes up for it for that gun so i i look forward to see more and more pros use this tank more often instead of the t32s the t32s right now is my favorite tank that i'm playing um but it doesn't have the mobility or even the autoloader function of a T69, such as Nagatron and Hugo Maximus are playing. Looks like we're gonna have an engagement here. Three tier six or T69s, excuse me, trying to chase down the two the T71 and the T1 as they've been spotted. F0 trying to get out of there as soon as he can. Absolute Royal doing the same thing. They're gonna round this corner and try to get a shot on anyone that's left in the vicinity of these T69s. However, it looks like they're able to escape very, very quickly as the T71 is gonna to move to the top of the map. And the T1, Cunningham, is going to be just around the buildings. Again, 10-second rule. If you're behind a building for 10 seconds, the enemy will lose sight of you unless you're within 15 meters. Then they have the magical x-ray. Pretty much just the sense of hearing a tank outside or knowing that an enemy is there around the corner. Those T69 still holding down the center of the crossroads here for Ruinberg. Ruinberg, quite, a, quite an intriguing mech because of the fields on the west side and the buildings on the east side, which is why that bison pick was a bit of a gamble, people would say. Now the AMX 5100s are going back to their base, and Call Me Sai is down. Xthor is down. Fulcrum right now, Greetorp, full tanks. While two tanks are down, I'll take that back. Now Absolute Royal has gone down, one of his tanks. So, one take advantage at this time for Fulcrum. I was going to say it was going to be a flawless victory against Greetorp, but that's not going to be the case. That tier 7, man. Is he still playing the WZ-132, uh, the WZ, the, the Tier 7? He was in the, the T-71, yes, but yeah. that is the one that went down. Uh, Relic's still in the Bison. That that Tier 2 artillery can damage these Tier 8 tanks. It, some people may not believe it, but you need to believe it. You need to believe the metagame of World of Tanks here and the choices that are made. Aggressive push now coming in from Fulcrum against the base of wreak havoc and now it's going to be a corner battle between the amx 5100s t69s three t69s are going to take some damage that amx 5100 has a lot of hp but thy bane the other amx 5100 is going to come in from the rear he goes down with a shot from soviet the unknown one barely any hp left and snipe for food the t69 that could not do enough damage against Fulcrum is going to back out as well. This could be the beginning of the end and the victory for Fulcrum Gaming. And Snipe for Food. Is it a get simply pulverized by Soviet as he moves in for the Ram? Unknown one, the only one left alive. Fulcrum Gaming is going to take it, folks. They're going to win it. And this best of five will be the first of three victories in the Major League Championship Series Spring 2013. And they do it. Fulcrum Gaming again on top. For North America, nigh unstoppable on this side of the world, Greek Torp. They're a team that we've talked about a lot as we've been forming the North American League, and I'm excited to see them progress along with the other teams that will make it for the league. That's, dude, I mean, we had Nagatron in here for a little bit, and just talking with him, you can really see how much they prepare and put in the time and effort to uh, being the best team possible. And uh, they deserve every bit of it. They've played fantastically. Big congratulations to Fulcrum Gaming. They'll be taking home 200,000 gold. Also, there was a bit of an asterisk. Uh, there was an asterisk with a bit of a mysterious message on what else they'll be receiving. 
Well, I am allowed to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that Fulcrum Gaming will be one of the invited teams for the North American League. They do not have to go through the qualifier system because of their placement in the World of Tanks Major League Championship Series Spring 2013 League. Um, they will not have to go through the qualifier series. But guess what? The same goes for Wreak Havoc. They, too, uh, are an invited team. Congratulations to them. I'm actually really excited to these, see these teams coming into... Uh, um, the well, honestly, the the tournament that we're going to be doing. I mean, how much fun is that going to be? Sweet Jesus! <laughs> it's going to be awesome. A reminder: if you're watching this vod, that the qualifiers, the first round of qualifiers, registration ends Sunday at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Teams will be fighting the following week for a debut broadcast, June fifth at six p.m. over at WGLNA on Twitch. Hopefully, the servers will be working. I'm sure they will be. And you can catch all the action there. Wednesday through Sunday, we'll be having uh, matches and recap shows on Sunday. And then once again, the following week, you'll have another chance to qualify if you were unable to be the four teams that make it. So you'll have two chances to qualify because the following week, we'll be having registration because Wargaming will be at E3. And the following week after that, we'll have our second qualifier rounds. And then after that, in July, Andre, the league starts up and... This has been a long time coming for North America. We've seen leagues across the world, and I look forward to seeing more teams such as Fulcrum Gaming and Wreak Havoc perform very, very well in the North American League. You too, man. I'm just going to uh, – you took all the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I can just only reiterate that I'm really excited for this. You know, World Tank's such a fun game not only to play but to <laughs> to study – I know a lot of people wouldn't even say that, but um, I, I love it. I absolutely love it, and uh, I hope everybody knows that. You know, everybody here at the the uh, the offices are just such gigantic students of the game right now. We're all looking forward to it. Yeah, we are indeed. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to visit the website WGLNA as we will be launching the Wargaming.net League North America. World of Tanks. I'm Glutch. Uh, I'm Clutch. I'm Clutch. He's Greed Torb. I said Glutch. I, I guess that's going to be our, our <laughs> commentating archon name, Glutch. Anyways, I'm Joshua Clutch Gray. Joining me was Andre Greed Torb Hengshua. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.